What's up guys, this is Riz from Castle Crypto and today we're going to talk about blockchain games and we're going to try to do it in the most simple manner possible. First thing I'm going to say is if you don't understand Bitcoin or blockchain itself, you probably should go study and learn about Bitcoin because it's the reason why we're all here today anyway. So I would just immediately stop this video, go check out Bitcoin if, you're not, if you don't understand that. For anyone that does, we're going to dive into blockchain games. We're going to try to keep it as simple as possible. We're not going to get into too many technical details. Here we go. What is a blockchain, first of all? It's essentially just a big database that stores information. The only difference is that it allows for a few important factors. Uh, the main one being that it's uncensorable and immutable, that, so the data cannot be changed. Um, no single person or entity owns the blockchain. It exists for all to see or use and is decentralized. And one of the most important factors for both Bitcoin and blockchain games is that there is provable ownership and history. So for example, if John owns three Bitcoin, he always will own three Bitcoin unless he spends it or sends it to someone. Um, blockchain also allows for provable scarcity. So the statement you may have heard before is there will only ever be 21 million Bitcoin. But in the blockchain gaming realm, imagine statements such as there will only ever be 50 golden swords. Now in blockchain, typically what happens is there is a blockchain of stuff, okay, this on an immutable ledger. So it's recording transactions, things that are happening and ownership as we just discussed. And so one person might say, let's check the blockchain for a record. And another person might say, well, it looks like person A sent a transaction to person B, right? That's basically what you're doing. You're checking the public ledger of transactions. And what, you're, what you can find from that information is who owns what, or at least in the case of Bitcoin, it would be like what address has a certain amount of Bitcoin. So that might be John owns two Bitcoin <clears throat> in his Bitcoin address, uh, which would be held in a wallet. And in gaming terms, that might be something like John owns one sword and two shields in his Ethereum address. Um, gaming items are typically tracked on Ethereum or a blockchain with similar functionality. If you don't understand Ethereum, don't worry about that just yet. Again, we're just going through the basic, basic concepts right now. Um, because of the ability to track transactions in Bitcoin, you might say something like, John sent two Bitcoin to Sally. And in the gaming world, you might say, John sent two swords to Bob. So if we go back to our uh, explanation of people checking the blockchain for stuff, this, that's, that situation is essentially the same, right? Bitcoin transfers or items, or sometimes called fungible or non-fungible tokens, are sent and then recorded on a blockchain. Let's talk about traditional games. In a traditional game, you buy the game, you play the game, right? Uh, as you play, you might find and discover items, weapons, and gear, and you generally use or equip those items while playing the game itself. Now, in traditional games, when you turn off the game or stop playing altogether, you no longer use those items uh, and weapons that you found, right? If you stop playing a game altogether, like let's say you quit permanently, then all of the work you put into it, all of those items that you collected, essentially are meaningless now to you because you can't really use them, um, you can't sell them, they're not your property. Now, let's talk about a blockchain game. You buy the game, you play the game. So same, same starting point. Uh, in this case, same same thing, you find and discover items, weapons, and gear, and just like traditional games, you use or equip those items while you're playing the game. But the key thing to understand about blockchain games is that the item itself may actually exist outside of the game. When you turn off the game or stop playing altogether, you can use the items in another game, sell the asset on an external market, or convert it into a cryptocurrency. So again, the item itself, maybe it's a sword, maybe it's a shield, is transferable on the blockchain, but because of that, it has unique advantages, which means you could take it into another game, which we'll get into in a minute. In traditional games, uh, let's go through a couple examples. You might have a dungeon crawler, for example, Diablo. You might have a traditional first-person shooter, such as Counter-Strike, a traditional MMO, like World of Warcraft, uh, or a traditional trading card game such as Hearthstone, right? These are just extremely popular games that have existed for many years now. They continue to have a lot of players. In these game worlds, the games that you, the items that you find, you know, are only usable in their respective games. 
So a sword, a sword from World of Warcraft cannot be used in Diablo. You must play Diablo to use Diablo items. And, you know, if you were referring to this, you might call it the Diablo game universe, right? So we're in the game Diablo, that universe, you can use a certain sword. If we take a look at what that looks like, you have Diablo over here, a traditional dungeon crawler, and it has its own set of swords, armor, magic wands, and things that you can, you can collect, but they're only usable in Diablo. Same with Counter-Strike. You have guns, skins, grenades, only usable in Counter-Strike. World of Warcraft, same thing, swords, armor, mounts you might have. And then in traditional uh, trading card games like Hearthstone, you have common cards, rare cards, or just a number of different characters and things that are only usable in Hearthstone. But let's talk about blockchain and what it allows you to do. Blockchain allows you to create items and store their information. So for example, the requirements might be something like, okay, we're gonna create an item, we need a name for it. We also need a picture to go along with that item. We're gonna to have to define the quantity of these items that exist and who owns it to start. So for example, that might look like this. We're gonna create a golden sword, which is pictured here. So that's the official picture. There's only gonna be 50 that exist. And the first person to own them is going to be me, the game creator, and I will decide to dole them out as I see fit, maybe through a competition, maybe I have some friends, maybe some early access founders, things like that. So I hope your brain is kind of uh, churning right now, understanding what's going on. So let's go back to the blockchain and checking uh, the blockchain sort of discussion we had before, where we have a bunch of blockchain stuff that's out there and recorded, and we as the game creator just created a situation where we created golden swords and only 50 of them exist, right? So we're in the discussion room and we're creating a game or let's say we're creating a universe and we said, all right, let's create a golden sword and only 50 will exist. And the creators of the um, asset go, great, let's do that. I will submit that data to the blockchain. And literally anyone could do this, right? You just have to know how to um, publish that information to the contract. Now, since that blockchain stuff exists and there, we know that there's 50 golden swords, the person who holds them can give them away because we're talking about transfers here. Remember how we talked about Bitcoin uh, to, you know, Bitcoin transactions, Bob sending some to Sally and whatnot. Well, what if I wanted to send a sword to a gamer with the handle John1337? So let's say we had a giveaway competition and he was the first winner. So we gave a golden sword in a giveaway competition to uh, John1337 and it is then stored in his personal Ethereum address. So now John owns a golden sword. He's one of 50, okay? That is recorded on the blockchain. And we, can t we know that because there is a you know, public Ethereum address that we can check to see what he has. So let's just do a quick recap. Uh, blockchain games have an, a cool distinct feature, which is that items are officially and provably owned by a player. Um, all that information is recorded on the blockchain and therefore game developers can decide to incorporate items into their game, right? So that golden sword was created and it exists on the blockchain, but that doesn't even necessarily mean that any game of any kind had to have been created. Okay, and we're going to get into that in a second. Just to recap on traditional games, you know, what we talked about was Diablo having its own items, Counter-Strike, World of Warcraft, same thing, right? So this is just a recap of what we looked at before. Let's look at the blockchain game scenario. In the blockchain gaming scenario, what you might have is an overarching blockchain of stuff that just exists out there, right? And in that blockchain, we have data such as John owns a golden sword of which only 50 exist. And so if you're a new game creator using blockchain technology, what you might do is use the game to check the blockchain to see what people own. So if I sign up for your game and I say, here's my public Ethereum address, check it to see what uh, is in my quote unquote inventory, they can do that and then decide to incorporate. So for example, if I had a blockchain dungeon crawler, I could check John's Ethereum address and say, oh, he has a golden sword. So when you join my game, you'll be able to use it. Same thing with the first person shooter, the MMO and trading card games. These are all separate, completely separate games that might have completely separate developers, owners, whatever, that are have the same publicly available information that they can use to create, you know, create some uh, unique scenarios. So 
if we looked at it like this, we have the blockchain of stuff. John 1337 owns a golden sword of which only 50 exist, right? We know that because it's on the blockchain. Now the dungeon crawler, they might say, all right, we have an idea. When John 1337 logs in, he can use that golden sword and start slaying dragons right away. So when you log in, that will be in your inventory. We're gonna have a cool design for it. And we know this because you've connected uh, to Ethereum in some way. Now the blockchain first person shooter might use the same exact, take the same idea and say, okay, we don't have swords in our game, but if you log in with that item that we know you own, uh, cause it's provable, you will have a golden sword, sword emblem uh, logo on your character skin, maybe like a patch on your um, chest or something or, or your uniform, right? Now the MMO, which is similar to the dungeon crawler, might also say, you know, you can use this sword to slay dragons and kill people. Maybe it's like a multiplayer game, um, but maybe just the look and feel of it's a little bit different, but it's the same idea. Only 50 people would have whatever this weapon is because there's only 50 that exist. And then in a blockchain, uh, blockchain trading card example, you might log into that game and you know you have a special card called golden sword or maybe it's some sort of a booster that grants you know plus five attack or something to your team or, or whatever it is right so you can see in this scenario four different games are using the same item essentially uh but but using it in their own special way and this idea is kind of called uh like a multiverse right so the same item can be used across multiple game universes so essentially what's happening is the game is asking the blockchain, what does this person own? The game creator decides to add an item such as a sword to the player's inventory in whatever way the game designer chooses. This could be in the form of a weapon, a skin, a trading card, or anything that represents the item. Um, in some cases, this is really cool, you might actually receive or hold a game item like weapons or armor before the games are even playable. Okay, because this is again information stored on the blockchain with a picture and certain information and how many there are. So for example, 50 golden swords. And then later on, a game developer decides to incorporate that weapon into their game since they know it exists as a blockchain item. Now let's take a look at a very cool real world example that happened with two projects out there. Um, one of them is called Engine. I encourage you to look it up. A uh, very cool project. I think they're a leader in blockchain gaming but they released an axe as a collectible blockchain item and they just sent this out to telegram users and a lot of people that have just been fans of the community over the last couple of years right so these were sent to ethereum addresses and you can actually see them in the engine wallet so in other words it can be owned before you play any particular game and it could also be sent so peer to peer i could also choose i could say you know what i don't want this hey bob do you want this i'll send it to you here you go let's do a small transaction and it's essentially stored on your Ethereum address. Now, in this case, Engine has a crypto wallet, and because they're involved in gaming, they've actually designed it so that when they check the Ethereum blockchain, they've created a very cool presentation of the items. So if we think about the golden sword we were talking about in the past, the picture that we designated for the golden sword might show up in the wallet. Um, in this case, what we're looking at is in a weird looking ax uh, with a very cool design called Oingersdane. Actually, not sure, sure how to pronounce that. Very cool name, though. And this axe was doled out, like I said, before any games could really use it. So it was just distributed um, with uh, Engine. Now, a game called Forgotten Artifacts came out, which is, if you think about Diablo, it's kind of similar to Diablo. Um, and it was so this uh, axe was actually added by a blockchain game. And what they did was they implemented the blockchain. And what they do is when you log into the game, which is a very, very cool experience when you do it the first time, they check your Ethereum address. But in this case, they what they do is they actually check your engine wallet uh, in this particular case. And they say, okay, you have this ax in your uh, Ethereum wallet. Therefore, when you log in, it'll be selectable in your inventory. So there's a picture of the live in-game shot of an item that is essentially outside of the game, right? This game was brought into it because the developer decided to check the blockchain and say, hey, this ax exists. If you log in, you know, you literally download the demo, log in, and this will be already in your inventory because you already own it, right? Quote unquote, own this. Um, another cool example was the super popular game Minecraft um, engine also created a situation where the wooden sword 
is a collectible item stored on your Ethereum address. And that same game, Forgotten Artifacts, when you log in, you can actually select the Minecraft Wooden Sword as an item to use and fight monsters and things like that. They even added a funny animation where if you walk up to fire, the sword catches on fire, you know, just very cool. But again, this wooden sword is from a totally different game, but it's brought into Forgotten Artifacts. So just as a conclusion, we're not gonna go too much farther than that because that's the basics. Blockchain allows for true ownership of a game item. Um, games check the blockchain to see what items a person owns. And then what they do is they decide to implement these items if they want to. They don't have to, but they can. And players are basically free to send those peer-to-peer. Uh, -peer. And what this is doing is creating the idea of a multiverse um, in which items can be taken across game worlds. These items can be sold at auction. They can be put on the marketplace outside of games, okay? Which is the really key thing to understand here. So if you guys enjoyed this talk, uh, visit castlecrypto.gg. For blockchain gaming reviews, if you're wondering which games to play, if you're looking for early demo access, um, access to you know new tokens and, and just kind of like fun game items that are coming out, uh, we're releasing all the news for that, the latest news. Um, so check us out, follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and obviously YouTube uh, for all the latest information on blockchain gaming.